Yo, what's up guys? This is Theo here. Welcome back to Free Code Camp building a voting application. And uh, this is going to be part two. In this video, we are going to build out the login, the registration, uh, and sort of make sure we're getting um, authenticated users. So let's go ahead and knock this out. We start up Mongo the server. And uh, let me also start up Mongo. Got all of our stuff started. Let me change directory into my desktop. Let me change directory into Free Code Camp. And uh, cool. Let me open it with Sublime Text. Okay. And so we had sort of left off with our server being built. Um, we loaded in our process, our, our environment variables. In this one, we're moving more towards the front end. So to start out, I'm going to need Angular JS Angular 1, 1.6. And we go ahead and bring in the scripts for this. We also need the routing module. Okay, so let's grab this. And cool. Uh, we also want to have everything load through our app.js, which is going to house our client-side JavaScript code. Okay, and I'd also like to bring in Bootstrap. I'm going to bring in Bootswatch, um, because they already have, like, pre-made themes. I'm going to use the superhero theme. So let me bring that in as a link. And instead of here now, I'm going to place a div with a class of container and add on the directive ng view as this will be the pretty much the outlet or the entry point for placing in our views. I'm also going to add on ng app to be equal to app. So we're going to call our application. And inside of here, I'm going to create an, an immediately invoked function expression, which is going to run all of our JavaScript code on page load as well as keep our variables private and modularized to this file. So let me go ahead and start by building out our module. So I'm going to do angular.module and I'm going to say I would like to call our application app. Second parameter is the modules that this is going to depend on or that we want to bring in. So I need ng route for the routing. Um, and I also need um, Angular JWT, because we're going to be using the JavaScript web token module, which is inside of our node modules folder, Angular JWT. So I dist Angular JWT, and it's inside of here. So cool. Um, so let me go ahead and actually bring this in. If we go back to index.html, I'll bring this in right here. And since we've set up some middleware to serve from our node modules folder, I don't have to prefix it by going directly into that folder. I could just do, um, or I don't have to prefix it. I can go directly into the folder and I'll do node modules slash angular jwt slash dist slash angular jwt.js. Let me just make sure that's correct. Dist angular jwt.js. Cool. Um, so with that done, I would like to go ahead and go back to my app.js and I want to set up some configuration settings for when my app runs the config block. And this will take in a callback function that will be called upon configuration. And I'm going to pass this two services that Angular provides us, the route provider and location provider. Uh, we're only going to use the location provider to turn on HTML5 mode. And we'll pass in true. What this will do is this will disable the hash bang from our route so we have clean routing. Um, the only drawback maybe is that in older browsers, it does not support this. Um, so you could be dealing with that. Before I forget, because we're turning on HTML5 mode, it needs to know where to route off of. So 
So we'll say base href. We're going to route off root. Okay, again, you could route off whatever you want. You could route off API, whatever. It makes more sense to me to route off root. Next up, we're going to do route provider and we're going to say dot when. Okay, first parameter is the route. The next parameter is a configuration object. It has a few keys that we can pass it. So the first one is going to be template URL, and I'm going to give this slash templates slash main.html. The next key is controller, and I'm going to say main controller. The next key is controller as, and I'm going to say VM for view model. And I'm going to sort of mock the same sort of setup for a lot of our routes. So login, login, okay, login. We have a register, register. And again, feel free to skip this step if you do not want to watch me set it up. Uh, we need a polls. Let's say polls. Uh, we would like a polls ID page so for a specific poll. So this will be poll, poll, and finally, we want a profile controller for the user's profile. Profile. Okay, we have all of our controllers set up at this point. Close that off. Now let's go ahead and build out our controllers. So we'll stuff this out app.controller main controller main controller and uh, function main controller. And I'm just going to inject in a these for now location. Window, you know, I'm going to be using these and grab this. So, here we'll do login, login, login. Okay, we need a register controller, register. Register, we would also need a profile controller. Okay. And we need a polls controller. Okay. Uh, and finally, we're going to need a poll controller. All right. Okay, so with all of that done, we're going to add on uh, a very specific property. Or we're just going to add on a title property real quick. Um, and then we can sort of see our templates in action. So um, what we can do here is say VM is equal to this, and we'll do VM.title. So we can put login controller, we'll stub this out as well, and register, and profile, polls. And pull. Okay, cool. So with all of that in place, I would like to build out our templates. So we need a main.html. I'm going to give it the same structure of vm.title here, just to see what we're getting. And I need a login.html. I need a register.html. Also need a polls.html, a 
pole.html. And finally, we need a profile.html. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and run NodeMon. And here it goes. It's starting. We've opened a connection to MongoDB. All right. So let's hit refresh. Here we are. Um, and let's sort of figure out what error we're getting. So console unexpected token. So that tells me I loaded this in wrong. Okay. So I think what I did is let me just make sure. Oh, I didn't actually set it. So what I need to do um, is create some more middleware. I thought I had done this before. Say express dot static, and I want to use want to use the uh, node modules folder when we're in this directory plus public plus plus, um, plus node modules and that will look in our node modules folder that should do it all right um so let me figure this out why is it not Curious. So we have our VM controller. Oh, we didn't actually put anything in here. Our VM equals this, and VM dot title is equal to main controller. If we hit refresh here, we are still not seeing anything. When we look at our elements on the page or the container. And let's see if we're getting anything not getting anything. Okay, pass. Oh, okay. Let me debug this. And oh, I didn't actually move. Oh, that should work. So it's going to templates main.html and it's got vm.title app.js. Okay, angular.module app.com. Controller, main controller, we have our index, base href, and the app, app, script source, and I'm not sure I understand why this is not, why this is not working, so let me just refresh this. Well, check if our router is working. It's kind of weird. So we can do route provider, sorry, route provider dot otherwise test key of root. Let me try and hit this again. Oh, it's kind of weird. Okay, so for some reason our app is not being picked up. Hmm. Really weird. Okay. Uh, energy app, energy control app, script source app.js, and okay, we need to figure this out. So, energy app, and I don't even know if our controller is loaded. Back here, nothing is loading. So, app.js is loading in the route test report token bootstrap. Okay, so oh, my bad. Yes, I put it on the doc type for some reason. Sorry. I honestly didn't see that. Okay. So we go ahead and refresh now. Now we should get it in main controller. And so we can go to our different routes, login, we can go to register. We can go to profile, um, polls, no, 
Windows 5 Home Controller. Um, cool. And then obviously if we go to something weird, we'll get redirected. Um, so just some troubleshooting there. I'd also like to, for now, I'm going to add on this property to add some state. I sort of found out about this in a video series I was watching on Udemy on MeanStack, Simon Holmes and MeanStack Authentication. So what he did, he added on a access property inside here, he set a restricted property. And so I'm going to set this to false for this route. And really the only route that we want it to be true on is going to be the profile. Okay, and this is just some more front end authentication. We can sort of see how we will do this in a second. We'll set this to true here. Okay. Um, so with all of that, I'm going to go into my templates and go into main and I'm going to build out some hrefs, some links to these different pages. Okay, so go ahead and do this and don't judge my uh, front end skills too much because that's really not the purpose of this video. And we're going to go to profile and maybe we will have a link to polls as well. So you can sort of see all of the polls. All right, let's go ahead and refresh. There we go. We got login, register, profile and polls. Okay, cool. So everything is working. Uh, I want to build out our register page now and get right into it. So I'm going to have a very simple input box type text. I'm going to give it ng model of ng model of VM dot user. All this is doing is it will set property basically um, on our controller, on our scope syntax, our user is going to create a user object, and then I want a property inside of here called name. Uh, I want to give this a class of form control that's provided to us so gener generously with Bootstrap. I also want to create an input type of password with an ng model of vm.user.password. And just to prove something real quick, just to show you guys, this is the vm.user, right? And I can sort of show you guys, but let me add on this placeholder of name and a placeholder of password. Let me refresh, here it is, name and password. You can sort of see our object is indeed being populated. And these properties are are definitely there. Cool. Um, so let me take that out and let's add on this class of form control as well. And let's make a little button here with a class of button, button success. I will set a click event on here called vm.register to register our user. And I also want to set ng disabled to be if there's not a vm.user.name or not not vm.user.password. So this would be uh, disabled initially. And forgot to put some text in there. Register. All right, so you can sort of see it's disabled, still disabled, and there you go. Now it's enabled. Um, so let's actually try and hit this, hit this function in the controller. So inside of our register controller, we're going to build out vm.register. And this is, of course is a function. Inside of here, let's just make sure we're getting our user before we go any further. Okay. So I'm just going to say Theo and Theo, click register. And inside of our controller, we're getting a name of Theo and a password of Theo. So that is working. Awesome. Um, 
Next up, I'd like to bring in the HTTP service provided by Angular to talk with our um, API and our backend. So I'm going to do HTTP. I'm going to make a post request. We're going to go ahead and build out this route, but this is going to be a slash API slash register. And we're going to pass along the vm.user. And real quick, though, I'm just going to say, if not vm.user, let's go ahead and console.log, just in case they bypass this. Um, invalid credentials. And we're just going to return. Uh, just so we don't make a post request that's faulty. So when we get this response back, which is a promise, we're going to run this function. And I just want to log out the response from our server, from our API. Um, so if we if we run it now, right, if we just put it like TNT, we'll get post unhandled rejection. It cannot post. And that's because we don't have a API endpoint listening for that post request. So inside of my routes folder now on our back end, I'm going to close up the client side. I'm going to build out a file called api.js. So inside of here, I want to create a variable called express and bring an express. And I'm going to create a router variable, which is going to be express's router. Okay, and I'm going to pass this a, a property of case sensitive. I'm going to set that to true just to enable some more um, secure routing. But you don't have to do that. And so at the very end, we're going to export a router. So I'm going to say module exports router. So now when someone requires this API, um, they will get the router. And before I forget, let me go ahead and bring in my router. Um, so say load in router. So say bar router is going to be equal to require routes API. Okay, and we actually need to use it. So the way I'm going to use it is I'm going to do um, app dot use slash API, when anyone hits a slash API endpoint, let's go ahead and use my router. Let's make sure we're not getting anything. Okay, let's see. Are we still getting a error? Router.use requires a middleware function. Okay, let me figure this out. Express.router, push.exports. Oh, okay, I didn't like that case sensitive. I think it's, I thought it was like that though. Case sensitive, true. Okay, I guess I, I don't know if I spelled it wrong before or something. Okay, let's just go ahead and map a post request for register. So in this case, I will say um, router dot post slash API or just slash API obviously to register and the second parameter will be a function a callback function that is given a request and a response object you know populated by express and inside of here I just want to log out the request dot body that body parser is adding on so if all of that is good to go, I will now try and submit this again, and I'll say Theo and Theo. Okay, so obviously it's hanging, but if we go in iTerm, we can sort of see this is our body, name of Theo and password of Theo, and just to prove that to you guys, if I were to change this to Theodore, there you go, it's posting to our API. But obviously the browser doesn't know what to do because we're not responding, so it's just hanging there. Um, 
So we're going to say if request.body.name and request.body.password. Else, if they don't provide that, we immediately want to return with a status code of 400. And we're going to go ahead and send a message with invalid credentials supplied. Um, basically, the, the idea behind good API design is that your API wants to always respond with something and account for uh, all situations that you can. Uh, I need to bring in a few more node modules at this point. I need to bring in bcrypt. So I'm going to go ahead and require bcrypt node.js. Again, you can see it in the node modules folder over here. Uh, I also need our jot, our JavaScript web token. So I'm going to go ahead and require JSON web token. Okay. So with those set, if there is a request.body and a request.body.name, I need to populate a model. So inside of our models folder, I'm going to create a user model. So I'm going to say user.js. I'm going to require in mongoose that will help us build out our model. I'm going to create a variable called schema and set that equal to mongoose.schema. I'm going to create a variable called user schema and set that equal to be a new schema. And this will take in an object. And so as a user, they want to have a name. And this is going to be type of string. This is going to be required true. We'll say unique true. Um, and then they're going to have a password type string required true. Okay, so that's all. Later we will populate this for when the user has polls, but because we haven't built the polls model yet, I don't want to design that. Okay, um, I think that's about it. I want to do one more thing just to document. You can call a user schema dot pre, and you can pass this a argument of a string like save or other uh, parts in the lifecycle of Mongo. And this will take in a callback function. And you can just console.log about to save the user. And then I will build out another one. And I think it's post save. And we'll just say console.log successfully saved the user. All right. Um, Okay, so next thing we need to do, we need to compile our model to Mongoose. So we have a method on Mongoose called model. We'll pass it the name of the model we want to build user and what we want to build it from, which is our user schema. And finally, I'm going to expose this model um, to our application for consumption. And here it is, our model. Okay, let's go back into our API. Let's load in our model. So I'll say var user, and I'll go ahead and require, um, go up a level to models, user. Make sure we are not getting any errors here, cool. And if there is request.body.name, we wanna create a new instance of the user. So we'll say a new user. I wanna say user.name is equal to request.body.name. And also for our password now, this is where the fun part comes in. We can, I'm gonna do something sort of cool for you guys. I'm gonna do console.time start. I think that's it, or maybe it's time, yeah. Console.time start, we'll say bcrypt hashing. Let's see how long bcrypt takes to hash. At the very end of this, we're going to do console.time end. We'll do bcrypt hashing. And I think that's it. Let me look it up. Console.
Zero times that. Let me make sure I got it right. Okay, console dot time. Okay. My bad. Console dot time. So we can sort of see because this is a synchronous operation we're going to use. So we're going to say user dot password is going to be equal to bcrypt. And again, bcrypt is um, in here, bcrypt node.js. And you can look at what it's doing. Um, it's using the node crypto module. And again, it has, if you look down at the bottom of here, it has these methods on here. Generate salt, generate hash, compare sync. And yeah, you can look at all of these. But I'm not going to get too into that right now. And let's go back to our API. I'm going to say bcrypt. Uh, we would like to uh, generate, and we want to generate a, uh, let me see, gen, which one do I want? Gen, salt, gen, hash. Let me make sure I got it right. Let's go back. Bcrypt, bcrypt, and we want, which one is it? Gen hash sync. Okay. So we want to do hash sync. And what this does, uh, this requires two parameters. This requires the request.body.password. And it also requires a salt. So you can either store your salt in a variable up here, but we're going to store it right in here. Um, so we're going to say bcrypt. We want you to generate a salt for us as well. We want to make this synchronous. And this takes in a number of rounds. So basically the amount of times that you want your password to be run through their algorithm and be salted. Um, so the default is actually 20. And I've looked at their code. If you go over 31, they'll set you back down to 10. So I'm just going to stick with 10 for now. Um, so after that, right, we can go ahead and call save on our user. And that will either hand us back an error or a document. If there's an error, let's go ahead and return with a response.status of 400. And let's go ahead and send, um, let's go ahead and send an error. All right, otherwise, go ahead and return with a response.status 201 for successful creation of a resource. Let's go ahead and send back the document to the user. All right, with all that um, working, we go ahead, go back here, slash register, and let's make sure there's no show dbs and we'll use means or what is it use free code cam voting and let's go ahead and show collections users won't actually get inserted no okay so with that create this user it's theodore and theo click register and why is it telling me that? I think I might need to restart my server. Your free must have a next argument. Oh, my bad. In our model, I need to go back here and run um, next. Next. Is that what they want? I think that's it. Let me make sure. It's not going through any errors. Refresh this. Theo and Theo. Uh, I still have a next argument. Okay. Maybe I have to pass it next to let it continue with the middleware. Okay. Ooh, let me try one more time. Otherwise, I will get rid of that free. Alright, I'm going to get rid of that for now just because. Get exactly the syntax, but we'll look it look it up, and we will come back to it later. Um, so let me go back to Chrome.
this time and register a user. Click register. All right. So we made a successful post. We have a data. We have an ID and a name. And our password, here it is, it's encrypted. Um, we have a 201, and our user is indeed in our database. We do db.users.find.pretty. You can sort of see we get, get two user objects, but let me figure out, out our database real quick. And now I'd like to go ahead and register a user by the name of James and a password of James. There it is. Now we have one user. Awesome. Um, so let me handle this real quick on the front end. And I'll probably move on to part three next, just because this video is getting pretty long. But I wanted to uh, sort of detail for you guys how this would work. So if there is a response, OK. Let me handle this error real quick. Function error. Let's just log out the error. And what I can do here actually is vm.error. I'm just going to say vm.error is equal to error. And inside of our main, we can do this char. We can do uh, h4 mg if. And, or sorry, not, not main. We want this inside of register. All right, so with that, let me go back here. All right, and let's see. I think we'll try and register James again. We get an error. Click register. And we're getting a post that request in that it, yeah. Um, in that, uh, in that uh, we've got the duplicate code. So check this out. I can, let me look at it. Error dot, error dot message. Again. Refresh this. Let me try and register James and James. And I don't know what to do real quick. Let me go back to our app. And we'll say it is error.data. Side of here, go back to register, and we'll say in dot air. Should pop out for us. All right, let's try one more time. James and James. There we go. Duplicate key error. Okay. Um, so that actually that's the eleven thousand code. Um. So yeah, we'll handle that later, but. Uh, yeah, let me do one last thing before I wrap up this video, and that will be to redirect the user to the profile controller if they're successful. So, but first, I want to go ahead, and I forgot one thing. Sorry about that, guys. Um, before we get this resource back, I want to remove this route, and I want to generate a JavaScript web token. So to do this, I'm going to call JWT, which is our JavaScript web token. We're going to call sign on here, and this is going to take in an object as the first parameter, and we're going to say data. This is basically the payload, the data we're sending back. This is going to be the document. This is the first part of our jot. The second part of our jot is going to be process.environment.secret. And finally, the third part of our jot is going to be an object and it's going to have a key of expires in, and I'm going to give it an hour. Um, I'm going to go now, I'm going to respond with a status of 201, and I'm going to send the token. 
instead. So I'm going to wrap everything up in a secure token. So if this is the case, now I can say Liam and Liam. I'll click register. And what error are we getting? Let me go back. Uh, let me sort of log out. Why are we not getting anything? Our token, the team return response on status to one. Um, okay, so that's our log function response. That's what, we're not logging a response, my bad. Okay. So let me go ahead and refresh and we'll say uh, Bill and Bill. Click register. Here it is. We're getting our object and our data is indeed a JavaScript web token. And again, I'm going to end this video here, but I'm going to show you guys if we go to JWT IO, we can actually look at this the payload from our JavaScript web token, which is really cool. And so we can plug in, plug it in. Okay, and so you can see our JavaScript web token is indeed separated by dots, where the first part is our payload, the second part is our secret. And so right now it's invalid, but if we were to go ahead and plug in our secret, we can sort of see, watch, this will change to signature verified. So cool, and you can sort of see we get the data out, the issued at in epoch, and the expiration, the algorithm, you can set this, the type, JavaScript web token. So, all right guys, well, that is it for part two. Um, one thing I didn't show real quick, I wanna sort of look at the, the time that it took for, um, let me see, console.time, I don't know why that didn't fire. Maybe I just didn't see it. Let's see, get to register. Oh, here it is. So the time it took 306 milliseconds. That's still pretty slow, but um, I think it depends. I think a lot of it is we're also generating a salt synchronously, so that's bringing up the time. Um, but yeah, guys, move on to part three soon. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. Take care.